Christian. Most Christians try to marry up falsely two identities. A national identity with a Christian identity. So if you go into most American churches, you'll see a Christian flag, and then on the other side, you see an American flag. That is idolatry. We can reverse the erosion of the West, but we reverse the erosion of the West by rejecting what the West has become, not by trying to preserve it. The problem with the Christian faith right now in the West is that we lack the right structures to deal with the problems we face. And so what we do is we borrow from other worldviews to fill the fact that we haven't learned our own worldview. There is a danger from the left and there is also a danger from the right within the church. And Christians, for the lack of their own political vision, are adopting other people's political vision. So when Christians get involved in the Labour Party, or when Christians get involved with the BNP, or when Christians get involved with the Conservative Party, or when Christians get involved in the Liberal Democrats, they immediately start to dilute what it means to be a Christian. Right, what I'm saying to you is, what I'm saying to you, whether it's gonna, to, excuse me, hands off, hands off, hands off, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch, keep your hands to yourself. He's gone. How are you, bro? Yeah, mate. Peace with you. You all right? Yeah, Life yeah, treating yeah. you well? I feel like you know. Listen, I'm, I want to send you an email, but I have to go through. Them. No, you don't have to go through them. Here's my, here's my email. I, I told you for my bro. You're the only one, the only one out of everyone who, who actually includes nationalism in, in, in one of the... <laughs> one of the critiques that I make? Yes. Yeah, of course. You're the only one. I think to myself that. Do not anyone else realise that? And I, and I respect you for that. And I, I just want your opinion on something. So I'm going to send you an email if yeah, possible. Yeah, do I, why don't you ask me now when we put it on camera? Huh? Why don't we ask me now and put me on camera? The reason why I want to put it on I, camera I, I is because... I'll tell you, I'll tell you from why, because it's deep. And I need to... And then another thing, I, 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 you had a lovely debate about, um, with someone. I think it was... No, you talked talking with some black guys here about yeah. um, the new earth and then... Uh, I thought to myself, because I've got... Thank you, Borat. Right. Wait till it'll blow you away. I'm not a new earth. Yeah. Yeah? But it'll blow you away, because it will shut that side up. But I'd like to talk to you about that as well. There's so many things I'd like to talk so to So why don't we talk? Why don't we do it now? Because I'm not really... One, I, I'm, I'm a Christian. I, I don't debate with right. Christians. Right, then in that case, let me give you an email. I'm a Christian. How can I debate with you? Peace be with Do you understand me? Let me, let me give you an email, then, and you can drop me an email. Yeah. But I'd love your, I'd love your opinion on, on three verses when it comes to nationalism. Just three verses. Yeah. Three verses. Um, there's, You're gonna know. You're there's, there's one in, there's one in Revelations where it says that in the, in heaven, that people from every nation, tribe, and tongue will be gathered together in the praise of our God. Another one is in Peter, where it says that. Um, that you are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a people set apart. And number three would be Christ commands us to love one another. Can I ask you something? Yeah. What, in Revelations, what do you regard as the beasts? What do you regard were the beasts? The, 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 the beasts for me are... For you. Yeah, for me. They are uh, the opposing... They, they are the ideologies and narratives in this world that are opposed to the church, opposed to Christ, opposed to the Christian faith. So that means Islam, liberalism, nationalism, communism, um, capitalism. They're, these are the things that, that steer people away from their walk That's in Christ. Now, I'm talking about what the Bible says the beasts are. That's what I'm saying, the beasts are. But the beasts, what, what I'm saying is when John wrote the Revelation, yeah. he said five are fallen. Yeah. That means they're dead, they're gone. Yeah. One is, that yeah. was the Roman Empire. Yeah. 
and then one but is what, what was the Roman Empire? It was, a, it, was a it was an Antichrist system. Yes. yes. So so the the an, so what these beasts are Antichrist systems. Absolutely, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So they're Antichrist systems of politics, economics, social, cultural uh, paradigms, and and as Christians, when we recognise that something is taking people away from their discipleship in the Lord, then we need to recognize that, you know, it's either an error, a heresy, or it's an antichrist spirit. You know, and depending and depending on the context would depend upon how we see it. Would you class, I'm just saying like, in the Bible, because remember when John wrote this in Revelation? Yeah. yeah? He said five in Revelation chapter 17, 10, 9, yeah. 10, 11. Yeah. He says five are fallen. Yeah. One is, and the other is not yet come. Yeah. But when he does come, he must remain only a short while. Right? That's yeah. in the three verses, I can yeah. tell yeah. Right? Now, as he's writing this, five are fallen. Now, I would have to assume that the Babylonians was one. Egyptians were another. Yeah. yeah? yeah. So, they were not anti. They were anti God, anti God's people. Because well, before, no, because because in the Old Testament, the the word of the Lord that appears to people, yeah, yeah. the Son of Man so, that appears in the prophecies, the Angel of the Lord, all of these are the Logos. They are Christ. I, 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 it's a stupid thing what I said. Yeah, absolutely stupid. I'll take that back. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm trying to say is. He, the Bible was obviously talking about those empires. Yes. Right. So, the Egyptian Empire, which yeah. was heavily against God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Babylonians. Yeah, the yeah. Medo Persians. Yeah, yeah. The Greeks. Yeah. And most definitely the Romans. Yeah. And there was another one I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the Romans were at that time, right? Yeah. So there was only one more to come. Yeah. After John was writing this. Yeah. Now. So that one, it says in the Bible, only remains a short while. Yeah. So it cannot be Islam. Well, I mean, the thing is, what I would, uh, firstly... Because Islam has stayed longer than all of them. I, I think the thing is that in terms of, in terms of antichrist systems... No, it's an they, antichrist they, it, system. It is an antichrist yeah. system. Oh, 100%. But, but I, what so I, it's I, communism. I, but I, exactly. But I would say that, but I would say that the, the, that Christians get it wrong... Yes spiritually when they have an undue focus on trying to discern the future no we don't no no hold on one second like uh, i think because when you look at christ's teachings about the parables about the good and faithful servants and how much that appears in his parables the heart of christian spirituality is not to worry about or try to obsess about discerning future prophecy the point of the christian life is that in the here and the now, you're doing your duty, the things that God has called you to. That God will, when he returns, he will find you doing what he's asked you to do. And I often find that discourse about biblical prophecy and trying to discern about what's happening in the future often distracts Christians away from what they need to be doing in the here and the now. You know, because lots of Christians, they'll, they obsess about trying to prove, you know, that say the, the, the Trudeau government and the anti-vaccine kind of stuff is really the footsteps of the Antichrist. And, and then they waste so much energy doing that that they neglect fighting things like fighting the pro-life campaign, fighting against poverty fighting against Islamization, and all the, and all the fighting against topics, cultural communism. Many topics you've come out with. Yeah. yeah, many, many, many real enemies are left unchallenged because Christians um, obsess about fighting an, an invisible enemy. And the reason why they, fight, they obsess about fighting an invisible enemy is because in their heart they feel powerless. They feel powerless, they see all these real opponents, they feel that they can do nothing about them so they invent a shadow opponent to box against. And the reason why Christians feel powerless is because we're not organizing ourselves properly to fight against the real enemies of the church. I couldn't put it very much. I mean, you, you're saying stuff that I agree with. Yeah. But there is a point to this. Go and on. it's, um, the point is this, right? If you look, yep. you look yep. at, at this scripture. Yeah. Right? 
He says quite clearly yes. that the seventh beast, yes. the eighth the eighth king comes yep. out of the seventh. Yeah. He says that quite clearly. Yeah. Right? It's quoting from right. an Old Testament passage. Right. So it says Yeah, as for the beast that was and is not, that, it is an eighth, but it belongs to seven. Right. So if you ignore the if you ignore the seventh, yeah. you ain't gonna worry about the eighth. Now if the eighth was um, the Third Reich Empire, if it was, if it I'm saying if it was, yeah. only if it was, yeah. yeah, then we have to say that the eighth comes from it. Because that's what the scripture says. But let's now, let's apply I'm, wisdom. Yeah, but I'm, that's what Okay, go, let's, no no let's, let's apply let, let's apply wisdom to this. Because the, the reality is all we've got is speculations. No, we've got scripture. We, we've got speculations about who that is talking oh, oh, about. Oh, oh. But we can just look with our eyes and see that cultural communists are at work a large. Islamists are at work a large. So let's fight the visible opponents before we before we spend lots of time speculating about who is that prophecy talking about. Right. Now, that's, that was lovely put. Well put. Now, I'm going to say this to you, Bob. You've got to pay this really deeply. Now, okay. When, when um, like the Methodist church, I'm going to give you an example. I'll just give a pastor an example. Yeah. He was saying the same thing, and he said, and he said, things come in drip, drips and drips. Now, the Methodist church, I'm going to give use that as an example. Yeah. 254 voted against 46 for same-sex marriage. Yeah. Now, listen to what I'm saying. They didn't, when they first joined and got baptised, they didn't agree with same-sex yep, marriage. Yep, yep, right? That was slowly dripped into them. Yes. Right? When Hitler first came into power, yep. he didn't come into power saying, I'm going to get rid of Christianity, kill all the Jews, kill all the music. And, no. Yeah. It, the devil was behind him and he slowly drips it in. Right? Now, my point is this. If the Babylonians, yep. which you agree, the Egyptians, the Medo-Persian Greeks were all antichrist systems yes. and empires, yep. which, which were mentioned in the Bible. And how were any of them worse than Adolf Hitler's? Well, I'm, I'm, but hold on, let me. Let me, you so, have to so let me no, 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 I'm going to. If you don't answer I'm, that question, I'm going to, bro. Guy, can't go nowhere. Bro, I'm going to. Okay. Uh, the Third Reich was an antichrist system. Was it? Was that's not what I right. said. But is was, it that? Is it that? No. Now hold on. You, you've asked me a question. Allow me to answer. Okay. Right, you've asked me a question, you've Sorry, now allowed me to answer. Is. Was the Third Reich an Antichrist system? The answer is absolutely yes. So it was a beast? Yeah, it was a beast. But was it that particular beast that's talked about in Revelations? One second, one second. Was it that particular beast talked about in Revelations? I'm not in the position to say. Now, no, hold on one second, because there's a really important point that you've mentioned. We Christians have forgotten how to disciple civilizations and societies and communities. And because of our amnesia, we have therefore are blind to see how we ourselves are being discipled by civilizations, societies and communities. There are seven discipling heights that control and inform and form our inner being. Economies one. Politics is another. Religious institutions is a third. Um, art is a fourth. Um, uh, let me think of another. Uh, educational establishments are a fifth. Um, social customs are a sixth. I can't think of a seventh, but I know there's one out there. It might come to me in a second. The point is, if you're going to church for a Sunday for an hour or two, and you're receiving the word of God, but the other six days of the week, you're listening to what the BBC is telling you and you're buying uh, from Starbucks that are hitting you with LGBTQ messages and you are voting for the Labour Party and you are um, going to art galleries that mock me to form Benedict communities, right? Our model of church in the West is not working. We need a new model of church of Christians collectivizing. When you when you talk this, and I listen to you on YouTube, do you think I disagree? With I know you agree with me. So so this is the point. How so this is the point as Christians? How do we get from where we are to where we need to be? 
right? How many times, like in a, in a square mile of your home, and you don't need to tell me where you live, but in a square mile of your home, how many churches are there? Quite a few, yeah. Quite a few. And I reckon that's true for nearly every Christian watching this video. Those, those nascent fellowships that have got nothing to do with one another are the seeds of a Benedict community. If those fellowships were willing to stop thinking of themselves as I belong to fellowship X or I belong to fellowship Y and think of themselves that we are the people of God and over there in that church are the people of God and over there in that church are the people of God and then we organize ourselves to set up our own schools, to set up our own businesses, to employ our own people in our own businesses, to, to support our own politicians and have them elected and we organize ourselves to defend our own community from the anti-fascist and from the Islamist jihadi and from the, um, the, the neo-Nazi, you know, then, and, and set up our own political structures. Then we begin to organize our communities in a way that's effective to fight against the anti-Christ systems. I, I listen, I, I, well, I know you agree well, well, with me. Well, well, I'm going, to, I'm going to explain something, and I think you will agree with this. Yeah. Evangelical Christianity in America is the biggest. Yes. Do you know that one in four are nationalists? One in four are nationalists. And how many times have you heard me condemn nationalism? You yeah. condemn it. But what I'm, the point what I'm getting is this. You're saying, or what you're saying, yeah. but the fact of the matter is, nationalism, uh, Christians, are going towards nationalism. Yeah. It's a fact, and I'm going to tell you it's for why. Because here, look at this place here. Yeah. You have mass immigration, including myself and my parents. Yeah. Yeah? You have mass Islamization of the world. And what's happening is, Christi even Christians are starting to feel insecure, yep. and they are siding to the right. It's a fact, Bob. I'm not disputing right? it. It's a fact. Hold on. I haven't finished. Hold on. Yeah. It's a fact. We're, all, it's we're, a we're in agreement. It's a fact. Amen. Right. So, oh, thank you. They're tugging right. to the so right. You're right. When things get, when things get to a boil now, yeah. that's when I'm trying to show you scripture. Because if yeah. the seventh beast was... Hitler and the Third Reich, yeah. because there wasn't any other beast worse than that, yeah, yeah, Hitler, yeah. unless you can tell me about No, well, maybe so communism. Seven, maybe communism. What? Try to communism killed 20 million people. But it didn't try and... It's killed, actually, globally, communism's killed 100 million people. Yeah, but listen, listen to what I'm saying. Yeah. Zechariah 2 8. Israel is the apple of God's eye. Amen. You can't get nothing right. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. Hitler, the beast, tried yeah. to destroy every single part of God's eye. Yes. So there is no beast worse than that. Do we agree? Yeah. Right, oh, so bro, bro, uh, wait, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. We're, we're having a conversation. So so let so let me let me let me talk about what because I agree with you. There is a danger from the left, and there is also a danger from the right within the church. And Christians, for the lack of their own political vision, are adopting other people's political visions. Absolutely. And this is where the problem starts. Absolutely. If you're faced with an existential threat, like the West is faced with an existential threat, we are losing our civilization in the West. People, 100%. drowning people, will clutch at straws to keep their head above water. And Christians, in the West, because they lack a political vision for a new Christendom, for a re-Christianization of the West, or some are tagging to the left and thinking that socialism can save us, and some are tagging to the right and thinking well, that we nationalism that can save us. But right, exactly. We're leaning but, towards but, but, men but the point is, but the point is, as Christians, we're supposed to fix our eyes on Jesus. Amen. And that means that our mission as Christians should be to see the church, the church triumphant over all Jesus of her enemies. So no, that means <laughs> that means don't don't encourage him, no. JC. You know whoa, what whoa. he'll do no, 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 no. is now. is that what will Jesus what will happen? You see, so you've done it now. He's going to start. <laughs> so the the reality is that the the the, the Christian faith teaches its own political vision. And what does that look like? It means that we want to see a church triumphant all of all of her enemies so when a racist goes into a black church and kills black christians 
we Christians should be against ethno-nationalism. When a uh, anarchist and a communist burn down a church, as they did in America during the BLM riots, we should be against the communists. Right. When an Islamist bombs a church in Pakistan, yeah. we should be against the Islamists. Who's we? Who's we? Who's we? You see, no, that's the yeah, point. Sorry, that's sorry, the point. Sorry, 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 okay, my no, but this is a danger that lots of Christians. That was a slip Yeah, of course, of course, I accept it. Because this is the point. Lots of Christians can't separate themselves from national identities. It has always been a problem amongst Christians that we have not fully embodied and embraced the new identity spoken of in the New Testament, which is that we, well, by our baptism and by our discipleship in the Lord, become a new people, which means that your heritage, wherever that's from, is now irrelevant. My heritage, wherever that's from, is irrelevant. You could have come from Ethiopia. Where, where, just, where, just that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Incidentally, where, where's your? My parents come from Jamaica. Jamaica. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah, fact Jamaica. that your parents come from Jamaica is irrelevant. The yeah. fact that my parents come from England is irrelevant. I agree. We are baptized into Christ. We are one body, and that means our color makes no difference. Our ethnicity makes no difference. We form a new kind of humanity. And that kind of humanity means that it has its own politics, which means that the principle of that politics, the principle of that politics, just I'll have an honest conversation with you afterwards. That, 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 that politics starts with solidarity amongst Christians. So the first point of all Christian politics is to secure the freedoms and the liberties and the, the, the fullest expression of the faith for all Christians, wherever they are in the world. Now, Bob, I agree with, well, that would be nice in theory, but it's not, that's not, according to scripture, gonna happen. No, that's, that's, that, that's one way of reading okay, the scriptures. Okay, but I'm just saying, like, how I see the scriptures, yep. I've not seen anywhere where that's going to happen. It would be lovely, in the, in, 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 and it's going to happen, but only when Jesus comes. Yeah. That's the only time that there's going to be, in fact, it's going to get worse, the tribulations get worse. Well, that's right? one way of but reading the scriptures, what, yeah. But listen to what I'm saying. Yeah. As, at, right now, we have now four-year-olds being allowed to be taught LGBTQ yep. uh, literature, curric yep. curriculum in the school. Yep. That means children of four, five, six can be taught it makes my blood boil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can be taught that it's okay to this and all that. Now, yeah, it's if, middle if class someone, child abuse. If someone's born that way or whatever it is, that's all right. Don't teach children a certain way. Yeah. The microphone's here, bro. Oh, the, the people need to hear right. what you're saying. Don't teach children of four and five. Yeah. They don't know nothing about that sort of stuff. So what Satan is doing. He's already indoctrinating the children from an early age yeah. to 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 into sexual immorality. Yes. Right? Yeah. So what happens then? What happens then? You have the Christian yep. because because the right yep. is against all that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's and then the right is against Islam. Um, yeah. Christians are against we are not for Islam. Yeah. yeah? So all these sort of leanings is moving Christians towards the right. Yeah? Yeah, but, but the point when, Yeah, it's let, the, let, go on. the point. There's a thin line between right and far right. Once you're on that fit, it's so thin, Bob. Do you know what I mean? No, it, I, I it, hold on one second. I hold on one second because I think hold on. I, I I think that your political analysis is unfair. The the right wing sits Nazi across Germany. No just, let, let me let, let, let bro we're, we're, like the, the the right wing sits across a spectrum with shades just as the left wing does and there's a false narrative pushed by militant lefties that anyone who's not uber progressive is far right and it, it, it's a, a kind of villainization that's common in our culture we've got to act, we've got to be reasonable and accept that just because someone is right wing doesn't mean that they're far right and that they are spectrums of the right wing but, but on I, saying I, that, on saying that, on saying we, that, we agree on with saying that, say. on saying that, the Christian faith doesn't land squarely on the left wing, it doesn't land squarely no, in the centre, no. and it doesn't land squarely in the right. The Christian faith lands across the entirety of the spectrum. So there are, there are parts of the left 
that we Christians can agree with. That's there's what, parts of the centre we Christians can agree with, and there's parts of the right that we Christians can agree with. And the, and the reason for that is because Christianity doesn't have a political system that it's married to. No. We, we were born, we were yeah, born in an imperial slave economy. We came to fruition in a feudal monarchical society. We now live in a democratic, industrialized world. So Christianity is not married to any kind of political system. You and, say and, that. The, and the, hold on one second. That? Yes, absolutely. One sec well, let me let me let me it let is. me finish a point. Let me finish a point. Because the thing is, we Christians need to recognize, as you've rightly said, that that our that Western institutions are taken over by antichrist narratives. And we need to organize our community appropriately to that fact, which means homeschooling, which means setting up Christian schools. It means taking your children out of state education and telling your children that their teachers may be lying to them about things that they teach them. Well, there are single right, mothers, one second, one right? second, one second, one second. One second, exactly. And why can't they do that? Because Christians are spread out like too little butter over too much toast. You can't do the kind of things we need to do when we're so spread out. We have to collectivize. That's what we need to do. And the reason why evangelical American Christianity tags to the right is because, is because, is because they think of themselves as American. Go to, into most American churches. No, they do think of themselves as Christian. Most Christians try to marry up falsely two identities, a national identity with a Christian identity. So if you go into most American churches, you'll see a Christian flag, and then on the other side, you see an American flag. That is idolatry. The Christians are a people unto themselves. They were there before America, and they will be there said, after America. Said, That's the point. If they're going to be there before America and after America, why are they marrying themselves to the idea of the American dream? Thank you. Thank Do you know what I'm saying? I, I agree. I get that, yes. No, no, Do you know what I'm saying? I agree. And, and why have we got this problem in the church? We've got this problem in the church because we don't have a sense of our own identity as Christians. We don't have a sense of our own ethics. We don't have a sense of our own doctrines. We don't have a sense of our own history. We don't have a sense that we are a people. We don't have a sense of our own culture. And because we lack these things, where the gaps are, we're filling them in from society around us. And so what we do is we borrow from other world views to fill the fact that we haven't learned our own world view. You know, because the thing is, for instance, that I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. We, we, you talked about LGBTQ in education, right? Obviously, as Christians, we don't agree with gay marriage. We don't agree with the idea of transgender ideology, right? We Christians should be standing up. Abortion. Yeah, we don't agree with abortion, right? But here's what we could learn from the pro-life movement. The pro-life movement is an example of a mature political response to an issue that Christians disagree with. And we Christians should take uh, the pro-life movement as an example of how we organize politically to stop transgender ideology to how we organize politically to stop persecution of Christians, to how we organize politically to stand against the, the, the great excesses of capitalism, like we've seen with those, um, those, um, those, uh, what they, those boats recently. I forgot the, what's it? BMO, right? That's an excess, or that's capitalism gone mad. There's no justice in what happened there. But, but we Christians need to organize ourselves politically. The thing is, the moment we become unevenly yoked with the unbeliever, we start to dilute our own identity. So when Christians get involved in the Labour Party, or when Christians get involved with the BNP, or when Christians get involved with the Conservative Party, or when Christians get involved in the Liberal Democrats, they immediately start to dilute what it means to be a Christian. If we're going to offer an alternative, let's offer a real alternative. Not just an alternative politique,
but also an alternative identity and an alternative culture. And we've got to start doing that by recovering what it means for us to have it ourselves. I, you're not going to get no argument out of me on that. But, but what the point what I was trying to get at, which we're all going right off track now, is if, if things continue as they are, yeah. in other words, if Islam starts to, it keeps on expanding the way it does, yep. immigration comes in the way it does, yep. do you actually believe in your mind that nationalism is not going to grow? I'm just... Yeah, of course. I'm, bro, do you, have you ever seen me run away from a question? No, because you're just... Right. You're so why are you worried? Why are you worried that I'm going to... Why are you worried that I'm going to dodge your question? Somewhere. I'm not going to dodge so, your question. So, so what you're talking about is definitely... I'm not Shamsi. No. So what you're talking about, what I know... And I'm not Ali Dawa. What I know is definitely going to happen. It's not a matter of... Yeah. It's not a matter of uh, when, but if. Yes, uh, I agree. If, but when. Well, it's already happening. Okay. It's no, already happening. I'm not talking about it's already happening. I'm talking about it's going to happen properly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I remember one time, I'm not going to say I nearly slipped up there and say you Yeah. Know, but uh, it's, even the authorities, even the police know it's definitely on the cars they're prepared it's going to happen. Yeah. And that's, so, therefore, if it's going to, something's going to happen, you can see it's going to happen. Yes. You can see that Hitler was the worst beast ever. It was a terrible beast. Well, okay. There's no denying let, it. Let, 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 let me go back again. So we just get this one thing straight. No, no, you were making a good point. You're, you're a Christian. Yeah. Right? I condemn Nazism. Oh, no, you're a Christian. Yeah. And the Bible says the apple, Zechariah 2, yes. of God's eye is, is Israel. Israel. Yes. Israel. Right. Now, the only beast that ever in the whole history of the Bible that tried to wipe out the apple of God's eye. Is the is is Nazi Germany to wipe them all? The, Ro the Romans tried. They it. never tried to wipe them out. The Romans they, tried it. Listen. They yes, they did. Listen. They, they Adrian's. Okay. Adrian's. Right, then, okay. He tried to ban circumcision. He tried to okay. ban kosher it's not laws. Them. They, not well, annihilate they did them. a pretty good job in Israel. Yes, they did. I, I, I'm not going to say. 70 AD. Yes, they did. 100. percent But what I'm trying to say is, okay, then let's just include that in for, for, for argument's sake, right? And we're including that as a beast, aren't yeah. we? Because yeah. Because it was yeah. a beast at the time John wrote. Revelation. I'm happy to call Nazism a beast. I don't. Romans, when bro, I don't. make your point. It's a I good point. Is it, but you, but you, you, okay. You, okay. So if that was a, if that was definitely a beast at the time, yeah. yeah. Because it was the one that sacked Israel, Jer Jerusalem, yeah. Yeah. killed a million yeah. Jews. Yeah. 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 Then it says there's going to be a seventh beast after. Yes. And if Hitler come along and kill six million of them and try yeah. to kill the whole world, and you're not going to say that that's not the seven beasts. I'm, then, yeah, you, I'm, I'm, yeah, you're right. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say with certainty that that's the seventh hold beast. On, yeah. Hold on. Okay. Wait a minute. So then, the the Bible says that this beast right, only remains a short while. Yes. It's not well, Roman Empire yeah. ended up seven hundred years. Yeah. Babylonians three hundred years. Yeah. Egyptians a thousand years. Yeah. All the other beasts. But this beast that comes along... 12 years. Well done, you know your history. Yeah. Right. So, and you're still, with all the evidence, smashing you in the head, kicking you all around the place, you're still going to say, I'm not going to... Because, here's the reason why. Yeah, that's just, that's bro, just bro, bro, no, hold on, right? I'm not saying, I'm not trying to defend Nazism or say that in some way, no, in any way, not. it's good. It's an evil thing. I, I actually thought you were making a much better point I when you were talking about the rise of nationalism. But let me reply I, now. I haven't finished. Let, that, let me, let me, I haven't let me, finished. Bro, let me reply. If, if Islam carries on expanding the way yes. it is, right? Um, immigration, mass immigration keeps on, because it is going to come. Yeah, 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 yeah. Destabilisation of the world. Yep. Yeah. So nationalism across Europe, yes. like especially Eastern Europe, is yep, already yep. there. We've covered this ground, yeah. Is, is like which you cover yep. uh, quite yep. a lot, yep. is going to increase. Yes. Right? So that means then what the scripture says, not yep. what I say or what you say. Yeah. The scripture says yep. that the eighth beast comes out of the seventh beast. Yeah. Right. So now let me let, so let me let me reply. Right? The thing is, we both accept that nationalism, we both accept that nationalism is an evil, right? We both accept that nationalism is, is, is something that's destructive to our society, right? And I agree with you that Christians should not get in bed with nationalists. 
we well, Christians should well, we be, all do it. So we should we Christians we all do it. Should, can I finish? So we Christians should be patriotic to the church. Absolutely. And the the, the problem that we face is poor discipleship. The, yes. Because we don't teach. Because we're running because, away from it. No, because we You're don't. The only one because because we don't oh, teach. Because we don't teach a strong Christian identity, people feeling the threat of other identities are looking around for a strong identity, seeing it in the nationalist and going over there. What we need to do is to teach a strong Christian identity. That the thing that defines me and you is not our race, is not our gender, is not our uh, sexuality or our ability. The thing that defines me and you is our religious identity. It, it is our religious identity. And that this is the birth point of everything that we should do as Christians. I totally agree. That it is the birth point of our politics, it is the birth point of our economics, it is the birth point of our value system, it's the birth point of artistic expression, it's the birth point of our culture, it's the birth point of our society. Right? And then, when we have organized ourselves to live that out, we then, we then, we then challenge the world around us with a different light from the light of nationalism. Right? The reason, when you're right, nationalism will continue to grow. And nationalism will continue to grow because of bad politics yeah. by progressives it will, will, it? It will. nationalism will continue National, to grow nationalism will, will continue to grow <laughs> oh, yeah, but christians on. but christians but christians need to oppose the progressive we need to oppose the islamist Excuse and we need me, to oppose my, my, my the nationalism and we need to oppose nationalism the progressive and we need to oppose um, the islamist they're all enemies of the church, and the church has real enemies, so we need to stand up to them. And we do that because we love one another. If you're the church and I'm the church, and this person is against you because you're a Christian, it is incumbent upon me as a Christian to defend you against your enemy. If I did anything less than that, I failed to love you. And it says in scripture to do good to all men, but especially those in the house of faith. Which means that our first loyalty is to the church. In Corinthians, it talks us about being a body. And it says that we are one body. If one part of the body suffers, the whole body suffers. That's my point, Bob. So if... Now, yes. we know, you know, I know, I see it, honestly, it, it hurts Egyptian me, it kills me because I can see it, yeah. and we're running away from it. Yeah. But Christians right, are being hurt by nationalism, we are, it's British just a fact, British and you know it. If I send, when I send you stuff, you will see that one in four Christians uh, in, in America are leading towards the right and the far right. Because the church has not organised itself to give an alternative. You, see, about this, me, you just said a point there about Corinthians. Yeah. Yeah? So the body is being infect, infected. Yes, right? you're right. So if we just keep on ignoring that, that the body is being infected. I'm not. Aren't you? That's why I come to you, Yeah. Right. So the, the point is, in the church, yeah. Yeah, in the church, believers are in the church. Yeah? But believers are going to fall away. A lot of the believers are going to fall away. And yeah. like how you brilliantly pointed out, are going to lean towards their big brother the right. Or the left. Or the left. Either way, they're going to go Each is a danger. Each is a... Yes, both of them are just... Excuse me, to Which is not an argument Excuse to be a centrist in politics. No. It's an argument to be a radical Christian. That's what we need. We need a radical Christian okay. politique okay. in the church. We're not, I'm not arguing for some centrist politics. The centre of politics in the liberal progressive world is just as much a danger for the Christian as the right or the left. Absolutely. What we need is an authentic Christian political vision that is neither left-wing nor right-wing nor centrist, but is rooted in our identity as a people, the church. I, I, that, that would be... That would be yeah, lovely in theory. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That would be and lovely in theory. Yesterday. And I, I yeah. and I hear you talking about that quite a lot. Yep. Yeah, on YouTube and 
But the fact of the matter is, we have to be realists. Yes, we are. The realist is now, right? The liberal, the left, yeah, have got these weirdos teaching our children, right? Yep. It's all right for men to do what they got to do to men, yeah? From an early age. Yeah. From the age of four. Yeah. Is, is that, hold up, hold up, hold up. Listen. Look, bro, if you, if you start talking to him, then our conversation ends. But what I'm trying to say to Fimori, they start off gradually. Right. They, they, Just they, keep going. They, they introduce something, dilute it at first. They're not going to come in full on, like Hitler didn't come in full on saying, I'm going to gas it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ticks that we need to learn. Yeah. We Christians need to start securing basic rights for it's ourselves. Like it's like ba leaving. Basic, basic it rights for ourselves. Rises. Let me give you an example. Base, winning basic rights for ourselves. We Christians need to win the right that Jesus we don't have to work on Sundays. So that any Christian who says, I'm not going to work for, on a Sunday, is not going to work on a Sunday. Okay? What we need as Christians, what we need as Christians, you, you'll, you'll only encourage him. What we, what we need as Christians is to organize ourselves as, as, as networks of solidarity so that our children are not being um, brainwashed by the state. But the thing is, there's a lack of wisdom in the church. And the reason why there's a lack of wisdom in the church is because a lot of these problems, we can't solve them at the level of a fellowship. We have to solve them at the level of lots of fellowships in an area working together. And until we start thinking outside of our little gathering and we start thinking on a broader spectrum, we're never going to be able to organize ourselves appropriately so that when some teacher pushes some LGBTQ nonsense on a Christian child, the Christians en masse say we're taking our children out of the school and we're going to set up our own school. Right, but it's about, it's about structures. The problem with the Christian faith right now in the West is that we lack the right structures to deal with the problems we face. We lack the right structures to deal with Islamization. We lack the right structures to deal with the liberal progressive ideology. We lack the right structures to fight against the persecutors of the church. We, like, we lack the right structures to make sure that we get represented in politics by sticking the camera on them, JC. You just encourage them. So, so what I would, what I, well, here's what I would say to you, bro. Here's what I would say to you. You're absolutely right to put a torch on the penetration of nationalist ideologies in the church. We are. But the point is, what I would say to you is that it's about discipleship. I totally agree. It, it's about discipleship. It's not about saying, it's not about writing off a whole bunch of Christians and saying you have failed in your discipleship. I oh, know. It's about saying to these people, look guys, there is where you are and where you need to be. Move forward in your faith. Embrace the fullness of a Christian identity. Replace your national history with the history of the church. Replace the values of your society with the values of the church. Replace your politics of your society with the politics of the church. That's what you need. That's what we need to be doing as Christians. The politics of the church is the Bible. It's the apostolic teaching, yeah, which we find in the Bible. Yeah. Is the Bible? Isn't it? It's God's word. The Bible is. Yeah, you're not going to go wrong by sticking to the scriptures. Well, well that's what I said. Well, I, that's where that's my. That's yeah. My, and I agree with you. My, that's my opinion. Yeah, I agree with that's you. Where I go yeah. Yeah. I can roll with that. Okay, I know you can. But what, so therefore, what, the whole point of what I'm trying to get is because. On the, on the cameras as well, is I am scared for a lot of Christians, not only for a lot of Christians, for the world yeah. in, in general, yeah. you know, for Muslims, for everyone, yeah. Yeah? because there is going to be a time, you can ask him, there is going to be a time when it comes to its boil, and when it comes to a boil, they can't do it without Christians, yeah? like his, Hitler couldn't come to power without Christians without the church. Yep. The church was 60-70% of the church was behind um, Hitler, right? Like 60-70% of the church will probably be behind a, a far-right organisation against Islam and immigration in yep. the future. Yeah, the, the, so the Christian move, go on. So, so, yep. so 
If we're going to ignore that and just start talking about nonsense when we need to be telling that 70% of Christians, listen, we are in danger of yeah. losing our, our loyalty to Christ and forming our loyalty to man and, and, and a mankind institution. And a mankind institution. Yeah. That's the whole point of what I'm getting Totally at. agree with you. You've got their likes of that uh, clown, uh, Tommy Robinson, now coming out saying he's a Christian. I'm supposed like Hitler. No, 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 hold on one second. Like, if Tommy yeah. Robinson is coming out and saying... Do you believe that? No, one second. Let me Hitler said that. Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> right? The thing is, the, the thing is, brother, the thing is, brother, if Tommy Robinson... Hitler said that. Look, look. Sorry. Listen, bro. Listen, bro. Like, if Tommy Robinson is willing... I hope he well, is. let me finish. I hope if, he is. Let me finish. If Tommy Robinson is going... If, if, he's, if he's started on a journey in a discipleship to Christ, right? You're not, you shouldn't, I'm not in no place you're not in a position no, to judge. No, I, I, if he says sorry that he's that, a Christian, sorry that, sorry you should give him the sorry. grace, the love and the charity sorry, sorry of any, that. yeah. Sorry for that. But right? Well, but, but listen to what I'm saying, right? <laughs> right, but my point is, bro, we, we, I think we need to start wrapping this up because me and you are in complete agreement. We're in complete agreement. We don't disagree about anything. So, right, but what I'm saying, what and, and one, one second, one second, and, and, and what should the church do? You say the church. I've, be I've already it stated it, and I'll state it one last time. Christians need to organise the correct structures to offer alternatives to the nationalists. You we need it's to. Coming. We need it, the right. A rise of nationalism is coming. Oh, it's coming. Yeah, I, I believe you, but the point is that doesn't mean that Christians should go along with it. But it's going to go along with it, you know it. No, but, but the point is, bro, that if doesn't we, mean... If yeah, we don't so, do, in the Is there anything that I can say? Like, listen, right, what I'm saying to you is, what I'm saying to you, whether it's going to... Excuse me, hands off, hands <laughs> off, hands off. Don't, don't touch, Ooh, don't touch, really don't touch. You mustn't touch people. Keep your hands to yourself. Well, you touch people, bro, bro. Don't just grab me like that. I didn't ask you to do you that. Keep your hands to yourself. Tell me something. You don't have to Thank you. He's apologised. That's all right. Just keep your hands to yourself. So... Yeah, yeah. So as I was saying, thank you, Bloodfire. So, so, and and this is and this is what Christians need to be doing. We need to be standing up for out one another. But that's what we need to be doing, right? So, as as what I'm saying to you is, you're you are a counter, a good counter, to all those Christians who rightly condemn the influence of the left. There are lots of Christians rightly identifying left-wing politics as a danger to the church. And you are the counter and a good counter to pointing out the dangers of right-wing politics to the church. And I'm saying that the answer to both the problems is that we need a Christian politics. That would be not. Yeah, but, but the point is, here's, wait, 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 because they, you've said this a couple of times now. I, I want to challenge you that you, well, I want to challenge you that you appear to me to be giving a council of defeatism to this whole issue. It's almost like you've admitted defeat, that we can't stop it, that we can't change it. And what I'm saying, what I'm, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that not only can we stop the erosion of the West, we can reverse the erosion of the West, but we reverse the erosion of the West by rejecting what the West has become, not by trying to preserve it. We reject what the West has become, and we say that we want to see the West as a new Christendom. We want to see Christendom re-established in Europe, re-established uh, established in Africa. Why can't we have an African Christendom? Why can't we have a Latin American Christendom? Why can't we have an America's Christendom from north to south? Why can't we have... And, and the thing is, we need to push towards a different vision of society and that means a different vision of our role in society. So I think we need to... Well, I think, yeah, okay, you, one think last comment from you and then we'll the stop. We are. I think we're all over the place. If you're, you're trying to be literal about what you're saying there, we are actually all, all over the place in our... Doctrine, but don't despair. In our doctrine, in our, our loyalty towards... Do not other. despair. But I'm not, I'm not dis despairing. Are you what, sure? I'm not despairing. I, Maybe. No. Right, and that's the point. No. What, what, are the, what are the three virtues of faith? Faith, hope, and love. If you build your life on faith, hope, and love, then there is no room for despair because love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. If you act from hope, 
then that means that you believe that your actions can and do make a difference. That means that for the Christian warrior, for the Christian knight, there can be no counsel of despair. There can be no throwing up the arms as so many people do on the right wing of politics and going, all is lost, we need to abandon ship, this ship can't be saved. Right? Christians cannot act from despair. We need to act from hope and we need to act from faith and we need to act from love and that means that not only do we have the motivation to push towards a reality not yet realized but we do so with the confidence that our actions can make that reality real and because our love is such we don't fear the consequences we don't fear the conflict and we don't fear the enemy because perfect love casts out fear and for too many Christians especially those that tag on to the right there is a council of despair and we need to reject despair in the church and we need to re reject despair in our hearts because it's only when we reject despair how do you think I come to speakers corner and take on the Dawa team when every single week we're outnumbered yeah, yeah, yeah. every single week there's some violent act by some wannabe Muslim gangster every single week there are threats do you, you know we, we've got to act from courage what the code of chivalry which I encourage you to read as a man says that a man should act with bravery and courage. Do you know, Bob, despair, have, having despair as a man is not an embarrassment. Paul is one of the, bra the bravest man, one of the bravest men in the Bible. Yeah. He, in Corinthians, said he's despaired. He was in despair in Asia. Yeah. He despaired for his very life. He was in fear. So we, we do, as Christians, be become despaired in fear. Well, I'm saying, I'm saying that as a Christian, you need to work on your discipleship. You need to change your inner man so that you are no longer in despair. No, no, no. Well, then cooperate with the Lord because he wants to give you the fruits of the Spirit. And the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, happiness, gentleness, goodness, self-control. If you're giving yourself over to despair, you've lost self-control. All right. It's lovely talking with you. God bless you, bro. Yeah. All right, so, and remember, when you, you see Tommy Robinson, you treat him like a brother. Who? Tommy Robinson. <laughs> Tommy Robinson. You treat him like if he's called himself a Christian, you treat him like a brother. Anyone, listen, you, listen, anybody. Do you know how many people call themselves Christians? Yes. <coughs> and until I don't, I don't accept someone who calls himself a Christian. He's just no, started his journey. Anyone can call himself a Christian. You treat him with charity. Right? You treat him with charity. I'll in treat, the same, I will treat anyone with charity. The, Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. I will treat anyone with charity yeah. naturally. But to, to say, call him a brother is just absolutely unequivocally unacceptable. If he is, if no. he is, if he is accepting Christ, then <laughs> let then then trust that the Holy Spirit will work on him to make him repent, when, when, to make him repent to. of those excesses into nationalism. This is why. No, he just agreed. At one time in my life, I was agreed. a nationalist. <laughs> He just agreed At one time in my life, I was a nationalist. Yeah, I was going to join the army. Yeah, I was a, a full, full on board nationalism. And I've rejected that. Now, if I can make that journey, you've got to give space for other people to make that journey. You've got to think of truth as being a fire in the center of a field and people can move, can move towards that fire. They can move closer to it. And if they're in the right field, then it means they move closer to it. Do you want? Do you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. It's the same with when you meet a socialist Christian. You got to treat him with charity. I, I get that, but I, that I don't understand the socialist. Yeah, but that's maybe a talk for another time. All right. God bless you. God bless you. Peace with you, bro. Right. So dust. What? Yeah, get you now. In fact, get you now. And this is well, for everyone else. Yeah, list, me and Dust. List that. List, list, it's not Dust. Dust. Uh, list, no, list, I'm sorry. List, not all Lister. Lister. look the same. I am sorry, Lister. I apologise. <laughs> I apologise, Lister. I'm we sorry. You, You're Lister. right. Go on, what is it? Uh, BTB. BTB. And Soko.
Yeah. At gmail.com. Okay. Right. Lister, I'm just thinking, shall we move this conversation less out of the way a bit? Let's go right next to that stand. Let's do it, let's do it here. Right, go on Lister.